Good afternoon everyone. Hope uh, everyone is fine. Uh, we discussed about uh, about complexity classes, uh, P class in the previous lecture. In this lecture we're going to be discussing about uh, what is NP and uh, NP complete problems. Uh, now having said that uh, you guys uh, might have a basic idea about uh, Turing machine um, which we discussed in the previous uh, previous lecture. Uh, Turing machine is the basic uh, foundation of, of the modern computing machines. Um, it's a very simple machine. You have an infinite tape and you have a head which is reading from the tape. Think about uh, uh, like say 10, 10 years ago there used to be and I think nowadays also there used to be uh, magnetic tapes. Uh, recorders basically and when you put that uh, cassette in your uh, tape recorder you record it the voice and you can play it back so there is a head which is reading from data from the uh, head from, from the tape so that was the basic concept of Turing machine now what the complexity kind of P, uh, so we discussed in the previous lecture the, the problems which fall under the category of the P are the problems which we can solve in uh, deterministic time. Means that we are for sure that we will be able to solve those problems in, in real time. Okay. Now there is another uh, class is complexity class is NP. So for NP class of problems uh, uh, we can verify whether the solution is correct or not but we cannot find the actual solution that easily or in other words uh, we can find in d, d, d time right. So it is sort of uh, let's say we go back to our independent set problem. Remember the independent set dinner um, a guest to invite for dinner uh, and such that that no two pair of guests they are in you know so if two pair of guests are uh, you know are not in good terms with each other we don't invite them. So think about you have to throw a party for say 100 guests. Now to, to find a combination of uh, you know each guest whether they are in good terms with each other uh, you essentially have to do 2 to the power 100 combinations you have to search through that space. So that's sort of a problem you know that it's hard to find the solution but what if the solution is given to you you can easily say okay these two guys they can't you know live with each other. So that sort of a thing uh, we are talking here. So remember the you can verify easily the solution so to find solution that easily uh, no for the N NP class problems or in mathematical term so we can simply represent for any input x if that belongs to your language L um, here language or decision problems set of decision problems are being used interchangeably as it, it's in the textbook and um, you know so for for each uh, input set uh, you can basically verify the solution. Um, Now there is another thing which uh, is in the boils down to completeness, NP completeness. This is also you know it's a simple thing that uh, the class of problems which are in P and if and only if P equal to NP then only uh, the definition says NP completeness okay and which is apparently is, uh, is an open question million dollar question 
let p equal to n be a naught. Okay. So don't worry about different terms. You know, just uh, try to understand the meaning behind these mathematical terms. I understand these can be complex sometimes, so it's difficult to to understand grasp, but uh, don't give up. It's uh, it's an easy thing. Always remember that the, what is the NP class is very simple. That certain problems you can verify, but you can't find the solution in real time. Uh, some examples of, of such problems. Uh, say independent set, which we discussed in past, traveling salesperson. Problem is another problem that person has to visit so many cities so that he uh, he doesn't have to repeat the city which he visited. Subset some uh, linear programming uh, connectivity in the graph, whether you know um, find the all uh, connectivities in, in a uh, an order graph. Composite numbers, factoring, uh, all sorts of problems. Now here I'm not defining what each problem is. You can go and check in your textbook. But to give you an idea that there are problems which fall under the category of NP problems. Now, uh, scientists have found the solutions of some problems and uh, some problems are still unsolved. Now, what is the relationship between P and NP? So, as we said that there are certain class of problems for which we can verify the solution. So, P is basically the subset of NP and what is NP is nothing but the union of all problems whose time uh, a Turing machine will take time which is in the power of 2 to the power n to the power c. So, think about this time is, is something like saying for some constant say 2 to the power say if your input size is say 100 to the power 100 and whatever comes here and 100 to the power say some constant 4. So, 100 to the power 4 to the power 2. So, it becomes a enormous number. Okay. So, that is by definition. Okay. Now, um, so, so, scientists have found the solutions and proved that uh, the problems connectivity, composite numbers and linear programming essentially uh, falls under P, P category and they have found beautiful algorithms to solve these problems. However, there are still problems which are which we do not know whether they fall under P or they are equal to a, a P equal to NP or not. Those are say independent set, traveling salesperson, some integer programming. Okay. Now, let us say let us discuss the concept of non-deterministic Turing machine. So, we, we uh, remember we saw the deterministic Turing machine. We discussed that it is a machine which takes the input x and a transition function okay, for some alphabet. Okay. And in non-deterministic Turing machine, there is a difference that uh, it is uh, basically um, for some state q. Uh, it is basically the difference is that uh, for non-deterministic Turing machine is that you have uh, instead of one transition function, you have to transition function. So, imagine a situation that um, remember the, uh, the tape where the symbols were printed and your head of the tape was uh, reading the symbols, right? Now, this head was mapping with the delta, this was the Turing machine. Now, in, in non-deterministic Turing machine, you have two transition function and a special state except. So, in this you had the Q state and you had only one special state halt. Okay. But in NDM you have 
two transition functions so at each step uh, at each function sorry uh, the function for each input it can be mapped via delta 0 or it can go to delta 1 it can map the next value uh, what this function will take what the state next state will take depends on the it can go either root either delta 0 root or either delta 1 root okay now having said that so for every function which maps So for every function which maps n to n and your language belongs to language or in other words all set of computational problems which are there okay um if if that is the situation then you say that uh, l this is a non deterministic okay i'm representing non deterministic time and time some function of n okay says that for for every x which your Turing machine is taking for every x So there is a machine which produces for any uh, uh, arbitrary sequence of, of x. If this machine is producing 1, it means that it is reaching to the q accept state. by either of this uh, delta 1 or delta 2 it can take two transition functions or it is 0 if it does not reach to q accept and it reaches to halt. So, important takeaway from, from this uh, discussion is that the Turing non-deterministic Turing machine has two transition functions. So, at a, every uh, input let us say you are reading here 1. So, your head can map uh, whether to go left, right, stay in this position or take some other action based on the two transition functions delta 0 or delta 1. Now, these two transition functions, uh, it is uh, uh, implementation defined, right? Uh, or it is a definition, it is sort of understanding that instead of one y, we can do things in two y's. Now, how these can be done in a you know physical implementation and all, we are not talking about that. And it has a special state q accept other than the state q halt. So that is basically our non-deterministic Turing machine okay and we can we can represent uh, a mathematical form 
at its union of all all such problems whose time is non deterministic time n to the power c okay remember what we saw in the deterministic time it was d time 2 to the power n to the power c but now here it's n to the power c means 100 to the power 100 is possible here remember so that that's a kind of huge number you can you can't do anything it means that you can have say n is 100 and you can have 100 and that falls under the non-deterministic time all right so thank you guys uh, this was a very uh, quick discussion on uh, non-deterministic turing machine and the completeness and np problems um, you can you can go and ahead and solve some examples from your textbook uh, to get more deeper understanding about this but this was a kind of basic idea concept about uh, non deterministic turing machine and uh, the NP, NP completeness or an NP class of problems. If you are struggling with this subject and uh, if you are, uh, need some, some private help or lessons or tuitions, you can contact us. And uh, thank you for subscribing to the Professor YouTube channel. Those who haven't subscribed, um, please do subscribe and uh, let us know how you are liking it. Have a wonderful day.